there is a hole that was left in my life that no one and nothing can feel. Can feel. Mm. That is a fact I'm learning to live with, but I will tell you for a fact, my days are hard. <laughs> Welcome to my channel, Shine with Njoki Kamanja Kedhi. This is a channel that we inspire you, motivate you. I want to thank God for all the subscribers, all the viewers, all those people who share. And today we have a very beautiful woman, a counselor, a mentor, a mother. She's all the good things that you could want to hear. But uh, because I always say it's not my story, it's her story. Without much further ado, let us go directly to our guest so that she can tell her who she is, what is her story? Thank you so much because I know you're going to keep it to the end. So how are you? I'm fine. Uh, I want you to introduce yourself because the way I know it's not your guest, our uh, subscriber knows you. All right. Mm -hmm. So my name is Triza okay. Nyambura Masharia. Mm. Uh, I'm born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I am married for the last 28 years. <laughs> by the grace of God, Amen. yeah, mm -hmm. I am, I am a counselor by profession. I am a mother, like you said. Mm -hmm. I have mothered two lovely children, mm -hmm. now young adults. I am a farmer. <laughs> I farm pigs mm -hmm. and and Kenyaji chicken. Yeah. I I am also. The first born daughter in a family of three mm -hmm. and the only daughter of my oh, mother's. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. What else am I living out? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. I am so a much. leader. Mm -hmm. I am a women's leader in my church. Okay. I, I fellowship at Deliverance Church Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also a director of an organization called Virtuous Woman Program. Ah, yeah. I'm your student. <laughs> yeah, we met there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you so much for telling us who you are. Mm -hmm. But you would like to know how was your life growing up, being wow. the only daughter? How was life? Okay, my my life was pretty, mm -hmm. I would say, easy. When you talk about people going without shoes, me, I don't have that experience. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Nairobi. Okay. I was, um, uh, like I said, I grew up partly in Uhuru Estate. And then we moved to Moja Estate. And uh, I went to a school called St. Anne's Primary School uh, in Jogo Road, on, along Jogo Road. And then I went to Gara Girls for one year. And then, don't ask me the story, then I uh, moved to... Another <laughs> side a teenage girl, I'm a school in one year. Right. I, I think because of teenage challenges and there were so many things going on in in my family. My mother is a, is a single mother, but we all were born by the same father. So it's things that happened in the family along the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, my parents went apart. Okay. And as you will realize, those things kind of affect children a lot. And True. being the firstborn, I think I carried the load. So in... Um, in Form 1, in Gara Girls, I fell into wrong company, rebelled a bit, and I had to be transferred to a school, uh, okay. to a boarding school. That time, Gara Girls was a day school. So I was taken to Kiraine Girls, yeah. uh, which is where I did my fourth form. And uh, almost immediately after high school, I, I worked with KBC doing... Uh, plays uh, on radio. Yeah, some plays that we used to do on radio because I was introduced by the late Ike Mulembo. Okay. He was a producer with KBC. Mm -hmm. I, 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 during that time, I was also preparing to go to to India for further studies because I did not perform uh, well enough to get a position in. Uh, in a university locally, mm -hmm. but uh, my parents, my mother especially, tried to get me to to a university in India. <laughs> I found myself pregnant at around that time. And because my mother was um, a tough one, mm -hmm. I 
decided, no, I can't stay here and uh, and disappoint my mother that way or face her wrath. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I left. Uh, I left home. Mm -hmm. I went to my boyfriend, hoping to look for a solution. <laughs> I don't think marriage was there in the picture. <laughs> I think I was more like, hey, let's get rid of this. I need to go. I, I, I'm going abroad yeah. to do my studies. Mm. Uh, my, my husband and I, I joke and tell people I got married somewhere on the streets of Nairobi. <laughs> because I called him and he told me to put on a tau. And then we met in tau and... Uh, he told me, when I told him, I think I'm pregnant. He said, to your story. So 28 years later, bado tunajua your story. <laughs> that is how you got married. That's how I got Na married. India, wapi? India, your story kai mm -hmm. uh, My mother, of course, went into a panic because they don't know where this girl went. Yeah. I went uh, underground. But of course, because of friends, you know those connections, mm. uh, they later discovered, uh, Nyambu, they call me Nyambu at home. Nyambu alipata ball. Na kwa kwa chali yake. <laughs> so that's how I got married. Wow. Yeah. And for 28 years, I've been with this lovely guy. So now you have come to marriage. Yes. I don't think you are so old enough to know oh, what I, marriage is. I was a baby. <laughs> I was a baby. Mm. I was... I think 21 when I left home. Mm. I yeah, I, I was 21 because my, I had my son at 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at 22. In I, mean, I won't say the the year so that you don't trace back <laughs> and find out how young I am. Yeah, how but at 22, young? <laughs> at 22 I was a mother. Wow. Yeah. So. Tell us now the story. You've entered into marriage. You are, you've sta now started motherhood. Mm -hmm. How was life now? New life. Wow. I must say it was really challenging mm -hmm. because I was I was young. I was really really young, mm -hmm. and my husband was not old either. He was only two years my my senior, mm. and here we are. We within months we are having a, a baby. So I'm um, having a problem adjusting to the so many roles. First, yeah. the role of being a wife. Uh, then secondly, now the role of being a mother. Mm. Uh, running my own home. And I had grown up. My mother worked for the UN. So me, I don't know his struggles that he found any housework. We, we used to do chores, but there was always a house help. Mm. So it was not like seriously based on me. So I, I had quite a difficult time settling in and one of the things I didn't even know how to do was to cook. Oh, I remember yeah. at eight months pregnant, eh? <laughs> my husband came home and found me crying. And then he's asking me, nini, nini, uchungu? Because now I'm expectant. Eh? Nini, nini, and I told him, apana yu ugali ya hivi, ya hivi. <laughs> He asked me, Kwani, ni nini umefanya? Wacha ni kusaidia. So he tried, he tried, and he realized he ugali ishikadi. Oh, yeah. And he asked me, Machi liku imechemuka? And I asked him, Inachemukanga? <laughs> so you can imagine what the guy had to deal with. Eh? Mm. Yeah, so that was the beginning of, of, our, of my life in marriage. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I told him my mother was a single mother. I also did not have that experience. Because by the time I'm... I'm getting to an age of understanding this is how people relate in a marriage. And you know, in marriage, most of the times you'll find yourself behaving the same way your mother behaved. Yeah, yeah. Doing things to your husband the same way your mm -hmm. mother did to the husband. So I had no Experience. role modeling mm -hmm. in that area. So I, I made many mistakes. Because of those mistakes, I think he got to a place where he couldn't take it anymore. And of course, the way I related with him, I related mm. with him the same way I related with my brothers. So I would talk back, you know. Mm. Yeah, and uh, he got to a place where now, of course, like a, like a person, you know, yeah, you, yeah. your patience is, tolerance is like a, an elastic. Mm. At some point, it's, it lazima is snap. Eh? Mm. Itafika mahali to snap. So he got to that place and he couldn't take it anymore. And... Uh, of course, he had to look for solace 
in wow. other things and in other ways. Before we come to that point, yes, you have a story of now losing babies. Yes. Before we go to the main one, yeah, you had six miscarriages. Yes, mm. I actually I have carried seven pregnancies, mm -hmm. and um, because of something I will share maybe later in the show, yeah. I only have one remaining child. Yeah. When I got pregnant uh, with my son, in the beginning, I, I was carrying twins. Mm. But uh, one day I wake up and uh, there's so much bleeding and I, um, I'm taken to hospital and the doctor, of course, sees that something came out and he told me, you've had a miscarriage and you have to go and get washed. Mm. When I went, uh, my husband, of course, said, let's go home. We try and uh, raise the money that is needed for theatre, because the doctor said, between now and two days. And try and raise the money, and then we come back. So when I went home, the following day, I was still vomiting a lot. And the following day after that, I was still vomiting a lot. And my, doctor, uh, my, my husband took me back to hospital, and the doctor said, ah, we can still hear heartbeat. <laughs> There's still a heartbeat. Mm. And uh, so there was no, in it, they didn't wash okay. me. And uh, I went back home and of course through the pregnancy there was uh, a lot of being scared. Hey, what is all this? Mm. Will I bear even a normal child? Mm. <laughs> you know, labda ni mtoto nusu alitoka ni tazaki or something. Mm. Uh, but I, I carried the baby to term, yeah. uh, nine months. In fact, he exceeded the, the days yeah, by two she. weeks. Yeah. So, uh, and then I, I delivered through a CS yeah. after, after nine months and uh, he had exceeded with two weeks. Okay. After I delivered my son, uh, he, was, uh, he, was, uh, he, was, uh, he was a healthy baby. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at the age of two years, he started complications, eh? health complications. So many times he would go to hospital because of breathing problems. We were living in a place called Zimmerman. Mm. And in Zimmerman, at, at that time, those who would remember in the 1995, no, 90, yeah, 95, mm. there was a place called Tanas, which the yeah. stage is still there, yeah. where there was a tannery for leather. Mm -hmm. So th there were some uh, fumes that were being emitted from that place, which would really affect uh, the children and even grown-ups. Yeah. So he had a lot of respiratory problems. They called it asthma. And he was in and out of hospital many times uh, between the age of three years and, uh, and eight years, no, and around six years. But after that, he grew up a very healthy boy. Mm -hmm. So because of all the problems I had taking this baby, today he's well, tomorrow you wake up, he is there, he can't breathe. I almost felt I don't want another child. Mm -hmm. But uh, when my son got to four years, my husband insisted, mm -mm, I want a mm -hmm. child, not a mm -hmm. uh, So I, we tried and, and I got pregnant the first time. I carried the baby for three months and then I started bleeding. Mm. I started bleeding and we would go to Avenue Hospital, we would uh, get a gynecologist uh, that would be recommended and we saw many. But at the age of, uh, at around six months, uh, that pregnancy, the baby just came out. You know, I was mm -hmm. in the house and then I told my husband, I me i'm feeling something coming out mm. and we went he told me let's go to the toilet and we went to the toilet and he saw part of the baby's mm. legs so we rushed to hospital and that baby was removed mm. i almost a year later i tried again mm. and when i tried again now this time the baby the bleeding began and uh, at the at the second month and i tried bed rest i tried everything but around four months the, the pregnancy oh, aborted the third that's losing. the third baby i'm losing mm. uh, 
And then we, we didn't give up. Sometime later we tried again. And this time, it w I think it just came accidentally. Mm. I had not planned. Oops, baby. Yeah, oops, baby. Mm. So I had not planned because I, the doctor had actually recommended that we take a break for some time so that uh, I, can, I can recover. So I discover, I start vomiting and I start vomiting so badly that I was vomiting even blood. Mm. And we thought I was sick. Mm because I was on a certain contraceptive, so we did not suspect pregnancy at all. Yeah. But when we went and I was checked, we discovered I was expectant. On the seventh, sixth month, I went, I, I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt there was wetness and I thought, hi, Nina Jikojolia. Mm. And then I told my husband, and then I realized, no, I wasn't urinating. This water was just coming out. Mm. And I told my husband, the water has broken. And he told me, yes, you could do when? And I told him in, I think, July, June. So we rushed to hospital, to Jama. And when we went, uh, the doctors looked and said, yeah, the water has broke. My gyna at that time was Dr. Karanja, mm. a, a very renowned gyna. And uh, he looked and he said, now this does not look good because the water has been drained, mm -hmm. but this baby is too small. Th this baby cannot survive. So what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and keep her and try to add water and see whether this baby can get at least to seven months mm -hmm. so that this baby can survive. Remember the baby, uh, I'm six months, one week pregnant. And so we, I was kept in hospital my blood pressure went down but after two weeks now there was a there was excrement of the baby coming out mm. and i had to be taken for surgery when i was taken for surgery my baby came out 1.8 kilos mm. but her, lo her lungs were not fully developed so she could not breathe on her own and uh, she went and she was taken to to the nursery put on life support and uh, I was I was taken to to recover. I did not see my baby for two days, but the doctor said I had gone through such trauma mm. that uh, it would be advisable to try and keep me away to recover yeah. because I had been put on so many drugs through the two weeks trying to maintain the baby. And the state in which the baby was in, of course, was the doctor was afraid I, I would be shocked and yeah so we i i after the second day i told my husband i want to go and see my baby say do you recover the doctor said try and recover fast so that you have the strength even to breastfeed the baby the baby is okay uh, but one day when nobody was seeing and i woke up and i knew where the nursery was because the room where i was placed it was where mothers who had babies in the nursery were placed mm. so i got up and I held to the walls and walked slowly until I got to yeah, where the nursery was. And I went and stood. There was a big class. I went and stood outside there and I looked inside. And there were a few babies, but nobody needed to tell me which baby was mine. And the baby I saw was my brother used to joke and say she was the size of a remote control <laughs> so tiny mm. with all these pipes going into her and there's a machine pumping air into her and i looked at her and i fell the nurses came picked me up of course and i had fainted and when i went to bed and recovered i cried and i told god if that is my baby i don't know whether she will live but if she does live, I promise that I will give my life to you. Because uh, by then you were not born I again. I was not born again. I would demand a hepa home where Yeah, but not that I had not tried getting saved earlier. Mm. So I stayed there. And with that prayer, I got peace in my heart that God would hear and would save my baby. The following day I was a bit stronger. The doctor came to check on me and uh, he told me, I was told you went to see the baby. I said, yes. Are you strong enough to 
breastfeed that baby, I, I asked the doctor, do you think she will live? And the doctor said there are 50-50 chances. chances because he told me that lungs have not developed. Uh, she can't breathe on her own right now. And she, he told me quite a few problems that the baby had. But I, I had known how to pray. I was raised in a Christian family. My mother is a strong believer. So I told my mom when she came to visit me in the evening, Mom, I don't know whether my baby will live. Help me to pray. Mm. I had an auntie. She's late. Her name was Ongeshi. And my auntie told me, Kataishi. She, she was those easy mm. people. And she said, Kataishi. Tuamini to God. And so I took those words and held on to them. And every day I would go to express milk because she would not even yeah. breastfeed. Mm -hmm. she, did, she was not strong enough. So I would express milk and then it was poured through some pipes into her. I would go and pray over my baby and tell God, remember what I said. If you save this baby for me and if this baby lives, I will give my life to you. Ah, I think that was the first miracle because after the first week, the baby was now able to breathe on her own mm. and the the pumps were removed and then after some time now she could swallow mm. and miraculously less than a month after her delivery my baby left the hospital wow. very tiny mm. she could um, <laughs> she was so tiny that I was, most people would be scared of holding her, including mm. her own father. Mm. You would remove her clothes and she could not breathe because she, I don't know, maybe because of the lungs. Mm. Uh, so as we talk, fast forward, that baby is in fourth year university wow. at wow. Catholic Glory University. Mm. Yeah, and so she, God honored that mm. prayer that I made and, mm. and she lived. So I had two children. Uh, when my daughter was uh, around two years, mm. another oops baby happened. <laughs> <laughs> and when this oops baby happened, uh, I felt, ah, ni mapema. And, and, and this baby being premature, also raising her was quite, uh, quite something mm. uh, because she needed extra care. But she, and then she developed uh, as night were adenoids and, and, uh, and within, no, uh, six months after coming home with her, she would cry throughout. She would cry a lot. And then one day I, I'm at work and the house girl calls me, hey, the baby is crying more than the way she cries and now she's even vomiting blood. So I, I rush home and my my daughter had, uh, we took her to Gertrude, the amount that Gertrude was asking for to carry out an emergency surgery because they said it was a hernia, yeah. uh, was too much. My husband said, we can't raise that kind of money right now. And this baby needs surgery immediately. That's what the doctors are saying. So we got some very good doctors in, uh, in Gertrude. So they told us, if you can't raise this money, we cannot discharge this child because this child, the condition she's having is very serious. What you need to do, tell us where to refer you to. And so we referred to some few friends and we were told, take that baby to Kenyatta. And we took the baby to Kenyatta. After one day, the baby went through her first surgery. Mm. So at this time when I'm pregnant with my other oops baby, uh, my daughter is also having complications. She cannot breathe. She sleeps at night and she's gasping. gasping for air. And we take her to clinics and the doctors say she has to have her tonsils and uh, I think they're called adenoids or something. Mm -hmm. They have to be removed. So as we are preparing her for surgery, I discover I'm pregnant again. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my husband, I cried. And I told my husband, people will even think up. I don't oh, have <laughs> to be <laughs> How many of these things do you want to do before mm. you give up? And my husband told me, you have a husband. You are not getting a child who is fatherless. Mm. And may have no problem with you getting babies. What's wrong with you? So yeah. I carried Nikai Ficha on a Josie Boluna Patanga on a Tambea. And as my daughter is having her surgery, um six months pregnant.
the seventh um, month now I had resigned from work because my, uh, there were all these issues with my children in hospital and no employer will take that. Mm. So I had to resign from my job. My husband had put up a, a hotel business somewhere in Dandora. So I was running that business. And I'm at work and the water breaks right in the middle of cooking chips for mm. customers. Okay. The water breaks and I take a taxi and oh, I, the only thing I could, I could think about that time, which is the nearest hospital. And uh, the taxi guy asks me, Ni kupeleke wapi pumwani? Because that was a straight road from where I was. So we, we went to Pumwani maternity. Uh, I was examined. I had already had two cesarean sections. So the doctors were not taking chances that he could induce. Mm. I was seven months pregnant. That was also another pregnancy that had no complications. Mm. So I was already seven months pregnant and uh, the water has broken. We are in Pumwani. The doctor Luke comes, examines and said he, the emergency theater. But emergency theater, it took two days. <laughs> it took two days for that emergency theater to happen. So one day, of course, the, the, the baby now, Ilekinyesi uh, Katoka, and now I had to be rushed to theatre now, emergency, emergency for real. Uh, <laughs> emergency for real. So I was taken to theatre, and squeeze, uh, squeeze, what one agandishwa hapa nusu. That time it's a general anesthesia. No, it oh, was general, no, unalala kabisa. Yeah. So when I woke up, I woke up and my husband was there and I, the first thing I asked was mtoto wangu yuko wapi and siku ya kukua na hata hizi nini za kujua ultrasound za kujua sex ya mtoto so my husband told me ah nimeambua ko nasari and what is the baby ni kanini and he said ni kasichana and I got excited and I slept when I woke up now I woke up eager to go and see my baby but i had not prepared remember this was not a baby i expected and i had waited i had given away all the clothes that belonged to my daughter so i woke up and there were these ladies in pumwani who are cleaners and they would sell clothes baby clothes and and i had some money so i when i woke up my bag was there and i bought some girl dresses, I bought something because I didn't have anything for the baby. And then I waited, I asked the nurse, can I go and see my baby? And she said, apana uwezi enda sai, ungoje, visiting hours, mtuenyu wakujia kushikilia kupele, kupeleke. So I waited and I was eager, you know, as a mother you're thinking, sasa ni kani, kanaka aje, kanaka, my son was called Masha, kanaka Masha, kanaka wangari. And so my husband came mm -hmm. and uh, I told him, Nipeleke nikaone mtoto. My husband said, Ngocha kwanza, Nipeleke na nas, Ndiyo nikijua ni wapi, alafu niku, mm -hmm. nikuje. When my husband went, he didn't come back. And when my mother came, I told her, I am excited to tell her, Hey, mom, mm -hmm. Nimekuza, you know, because in my tradition, you name the yeah, second yeah, daughter yeah. after your mother. Mm -hmm. But she, she was not giving me space. She just told me, "Why niliambiwa, nikakuja as soon as I could. Ati, ata nikiambiwa hii habari, nilikuwa nina, nilikuwa mahali nimeitwa, niende nikahubiri kwa mama mwenye amepitia mambo kama hii. Mm. And I'm thinking, yes, mm. mom, this is the third one, you know. Mm. <laughs> I'm not saying, but I'm wondering what's, what is she so sad about. And then she... I think she didn't know I had not been told. And then she tells me, Lakini kuluzi mtoto nyambu, you will always have another one. I don't even remember the next thing she said because I screamed at the top of my voice. Mm. And I asked God, Mamu naniambia nini? Mtoto wangu yuko wapi? Watanipea mtoto wangu? Mm. Because I think somewhere in my in my recovery from the anesthesia, I had heard my baby cry. I don't want to say anything, but uh, I have always felt, and that was my feeling, because it, it was later on that there came out this story about the Daya babies. Yeah, yeah. 
and I tried to tell my husband, I am sure my baby is alive. Mm-hmm. As a mother, I would know if my baby was dead. Mm. I know I had my baby crying. I want to see, because they never even showed me the baby. Yeah. But my husband says he saw the, the corpse, yeah. but I did not see the baby. And though I insisted, the nurses kept uh, giving me stories. So yeah, that is how I lost my other baby. Okay. So I was nursing CS wounds without, without a child, a without a baby. Uh, that loss was devastating. Mm. First, because I did not believe and that your baby died. That my baby died. And maybe up to today, mm. I still have moments when I wonder if my baby did not really die. Where is she? Where is she? She must be a big girl now. What yeah. does she look like? Did she end up in good hands? Is she growing right? Yeah, and uh, that was my other loss. And then I got pregnant again. The others were miscarriages. Yeah. So, yeah, but those were actually so the most dramatic. Six and pre- pregnancies. Uh, yeah, I actually lost six. Uh, no, I lost five pregnancies. Oh. I lost five pregnancies because I got two children. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now let's go back to this place when your husband snapped out of your behavior as a wife. Yeah. Now, having gone through all of those things, all those losses, and without any counseling, I was, um, you know, everybody wants you to get over it, you know, just, yeah, just let it go. But that is not how things work. There were moments I was completely depressed. There were moments I would wake up and all I want to do is cry. And of course, my husband is there wondering, and to tell you the truth, I also didn't know why I was crying <laughs> because mm-hmm. I could not trace it back to what I had been through. Yeah, so my husband could not cope with this. And though he does not like, uh, he's, my husband is not a drunkard, but he drinks once in a while. And now he had to get away from this woman, whichever way yeah. he got away. Mm. And now the more he got away from me, the more depressed now yeah, I became. Yeah. Where is he going? Mm. And, I up. Uh, and we started our conflicts there. And so from that point on, I decided whatever it is that holds marriages together, I go do now. So I decided to work on my marriage. Mm. Um, maybe as we continue, we might get the story of this, but yeah. I got, that is how we the Virtuous Woman program yeah. was birthed. And you do it so well. And some, somebody can tell it is out of experience. Oh, it's my heart beat. Oh. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So maybe we fast forward. Mm-hmm. You have a story of knowing your son. Yeah, yeah. So I started the program and the program was running well. And I started getting invitations to conferences and you seminars. I've found my purpose. I've found my purpose. Uh, I had gone back to school and done my counseling psychology and now I was, my life was good. I have a good marriage. Yeah, because as as God healed me, Mm. I also started uh, the classes now, Virtuous Woman Program classes, Mm. and I was healing other people and I found fulfillment and uh, let's say it was at the peak of my life. Mm. My children were, I think the, the dream of every woman mm. and my son was about to graduate he was in Daystar University and so there was that uh, sense of relief yeah, wow finally. <sighs> because Daystar was not cheap yeah. at least not for us there yeah. may be people who yeah. you know cheap is relative <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so we had strained to take that boy through Daystar and he loved it there mm. and he was one of those uh, you're a mother of a son not that I don't love my daughter, I love my daughter a lot. Mm. But my son and I, we were so similar in personality. We fought a lot, but we were also the very best of friends. Mm. Uh, he was the heart of the home because he 
just brought so much joy. He was a special child. Everywhere my son would go, his name was Derek. Mm. Everywhere uh, where Derek would go, he ended up becoming a favorite in that place. And so he had many homes even where we live. He was a leader in the church. He would lead the PCA church mm -hmm. services at some point. And so, yeah, that is where I was at. And in the, in the midst of all that, a week to my son's graduation, I woke up one morning and he did not want to, a week earlier, he had been talking a lot about people and trying to celebrate people. He thought his grandmother's birthday was that Sunday, mm -hmm. 23rd. But I had told him, I don't think Shosho's birthday is in June. I think it's July. He said, let me go confirm. So as he was taking the graduation cards to the grandmother who lives in Kahawa Sukari, he went and, uh, and he... And he found the grandmother, and the grandmother, of course, confirmed that I was not born in June, I was born in July. We talked a bit, and he told me, I was so disappointed that Shushu's birthday was not today. And I told him, why are you disappointed? You have now one month to save some more and even do something bigger. He said, I really wanted to do that surprise party for her today. I told him, ah, Sijali, at next month, to go to Tutamfanya. And then he talked about how he had celebrated his sister's birthday with with her mm. in April. So I, I took Kare, I did this and this. He had taken her to Luna Park, and he used to call it Lunatic Park. <laughs> yeah, he had taken her to Pizza Inn, and they had had pizza. He had bought her gifts and. He had even bought sodas and cake for, for us, the family, to come and celebrate. He said, I wished I could have been able to do more for cash. Uh, but, sikuwana pesa. He said, I want to celebrate the people who I love now because I don't know for how long I have them. That was on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning, this boy wakes up in a very jovial mood. So I'm hearing him singing on the corridors. But I woke up and knelt down and, and I prayed. And one thing I recall very clearly is that I could not pray. You know the way you you kneel yeah, and. But I found myself telling God, "Thank you, God. Thank you for my son. Thank you because you've answered my prayer that finally this year he's graduating from school. Thank you." And I thanked God for many things, but mainly revolving around my son. Mm. And then I told God, may your will, your good, pleasing, and perfect will be done, be done in our lives. And then I, I could not leave my knees. Apparently, I don't know for what reason. So my son comes into my room again. The first time he came in, I was still in prayer. But I felt, you know, the way you feel somebody has entered the room. He, he picked something and then he left. So the second time, I, I have stopped praying, but I'm still on my knees. And then I greeted him. And he said, ah, mom, minataka kwenda. And I told him, where are you going? It's still very early in the morning. Ah, oh, we had a conversation. And then I told him, stop going to work this early. You go for, because I asked him whether he had taken breakfast. He said there was no milk in the fridge. So I told him, kimbilia maziwa. Uende ulete maziwa. And I sent him some other things. Ukuje ni pike breakfast. Tupige story kidogo, tukikunywa chai. Ndiyo uende job. And my son went to the gate, came back like three times for different reasons. The first time, he has forgotten a bag, Yakubeba mm. Vitu. And then he goes. He comes back the second time. He, it had rained the previous night. He's in sandals, so he, de he decides, let me put on closed shoes. And then he comes back the third time, and I ask him, hey, ni, ni, ni. And he says, mom, ni mesa hao funguo. And then I took the keys and gave them to him. My son took the keys from my hands, mm. but he did not go. For some minutes, or maybe it was seconds, he just stood there and looked at me. And then, in my usual self, I, Ninini sasa, si uende bus, wasi ndi ulikuwa na araka. And he smiled at me, and he ran off. Uh, a few minutes later, 
a neighbor comes, knocks on my door, I, uh, my gate, I didn't hear him, calls me on the phone, I go to answer, he, she tells me, my son has been involved in an accident, he was hit by a motorbike and he has been rushed to Ruiru. My husband was still in the home and we, we rushed to Ruiru District Hospital. And uh, to tell you the truth, what I expected, I, 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 I shook when she told me my son was in an accident. My, my, my stomach just, I felt like something had just cut through my stomach and I, my heart beat. And when I, when we went to Riru, all along on the journey, I, I'm thinking, probably he's broken his legs or his hands. You know, it's a motorbike, yeah. you know. But when I get to Riru, I find my son lying on his stomach. His eyes are partly open. And he, I scream, I call him Masha, Masha. And he tries to, he, he. tries he tries to lift his head and uh, he, he tries to answer and then his fa his head fell back and he shook like that twice and uh, And all of a sudden, his body went like it's gone lifeless. And I screamed at the top of my voice. I held him. I tried to call his name. The nurses held me and told me he's okay. He's okay. But I think something in my heart knew that my son has gone. Because I told them, stop telling me he's okay. He's not talking. My son does not keep quiet. And uh, they took me somewhere and calmed me down. And then I calmed down. But of course, in that room, I asked God many questions. I asked God, what do you want to do mm -hmm. to me? Is this how you are rewarding me after serving you in the way that I have served you? I told God, you had better heal my son. You had better heal my son. Uh, and I prayed and cried all together. And then I thought, let me. The nurse told me, no, he's that way because they have given him drugs to try and calm him down so that they can be able to work on him. And I'm going there and I'm thinking, my son looks lifeless. His eyes, the same way he opened them, he, they were still half open. And I tell my husband, why isn't he Just having me. oxygen? Or Because I, I am seeing things are not okay. I, I'm expecting more. My husband is not talking. I told him, whom do we call? He told me, stop calling anyone at this point. So as we are there talking, the nurses call me back and they say, uh, I tell them, Musinite. Somehow I, I think I knew. They cannot be calling me for any good news. Musinite, vile mnaniambia mnaniambilia apa. And the nurses insisted, apa na mam, tuende ata ukae chini. I said, I don't want to sit, mnaniambia nikae kwa nini. And the nurses uh, told me, uh, and then something, not anybody. I think within myself I thought, oh, or maybe they want to tell us we can transfer our son to a hospital with better facilities. And when I thought that, nobody even told me to go. No, I ran and I asked them, Ninge wapi? You know? And I entered and the doctor came and he held some documents and he said, uh, you know, Derek Macharia was brought here this morning and I can't even tell what time it was. And uh, we have tried everything we can, but I snatched the papers he was holding and I told him, you are not telling me that. How niambi, how say me evo, me evo, because I did not want to, to think hear. that he was about to tell me my son is dead, of course. 
in the midst of all my screaming, he still said what he was saying, and I still heard. And I yelled and I beat him, and the young man, God bless that doctor, he just stood there and allowed me to do whatever I was yes. doing. And I cried, I rolled on the floor, I asked where the person who had hit my son was, and, and all that, yeah. It, it was painful. I think if there is any day in my life that goes into record as the most painful day in my life was June 24th. Yes. It was one day, one day he was with you and then the next minute, like yes. it's one minute and then the other minute. We were going to have breakfast yeah. together. And of course there have always been those questions and they are still there. Why, why didn't I just let him go hungry? For a mother, my my world fell apart. My well, world fell apart. That you did that. I don't know if many mother would do. Mm -hmm. You gave a speech on his graduation day. Oh. Why did you do that? Uh, let me first say that it was not because I was very strong. Mm. Uh, it was the most difficult thing I could ever do. But. It was only four days. That he died on a Monday. His graduation was on Saturday. And I thought we had already prepared meals for people to come for this graduation. We had ordered cake. We, and I thought it would be not right to ignore what the Lord had done. So in the midst of my pain, I was looking for the small victories, the small things I could tell God thank you for. Mm. So because it's something I had prayed for, mm. uh, on that day I was determined that the same place my son would stand, I was going to stand there for him, yeah. if it's the last thing I do as a mother for him. Oh, that was so strong. Yeah, yeah. But I cried. I cried mm. in Daystar University a lot. I cried a lot mm. as I looked at all those excited parents and all those excited children in their gowns. I cried a lot and wondered why me. Oh. Yeah. So how has it been since you buried your son? Wow. A roller coaster of emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, there are times I'm crippled. My body can just not move. And all I want to do is stay in bed and cry. There are times I'm numb. I feel nothing. But there's something I have learned, I, or I'm learning slowly to realize is that I will not get over the pain of losing my son. It's something I will have to learn to live with. That Derek was so special to me, so such a part of me, that when he was plucked or torn away from me, there is a hole that was left in my life that no one and nothing can feel. Can feel. Mm. That is a fact I'm learning to live with, but I will tell you for a fact. My days are hard. I just appreciated in my heart and in prayer the people who, who came and stood with me. And they were crowds. And thank you for having been there. Yeah, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Thank you so much because I know this, this story speaks to someone who has been through loss after loss. Mm. Having lost children, not seeing them after hospital, having lost a grown up. I know it's not easy. I can't say I know the pain because maybe I haven't gone through the same. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much because I know there is someone mm -hmm. who is going to who is going to learn something out of it and know how to handle herself mm -hmm. or himself. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much and may God bless you so Amen. so so much. Thank so, you for having me. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching this story to the end. Thank you so much. I know it has spoken to you, you who maybe have not lost someone but have lost your job, your business. Thank you so much for watching to the latter. I'll not forget to tell you that you should subscribe, subscribe, subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you so much. And remember, in this show we always say you're the light and you can shine.